Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the distortion emitter and all the cool effects like uh, ripples and puddles and waves that you can create with it. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff to cover so I'm going to jump right into it. First of all, to explain the scene here, we have a ground plane you can see right here. And if I go into wireframe mode, you can see we're fairly high poly. And this is because we have tessellation uh, from a substance material that I'm going to show you in just a moment here. So let's change this back from uh, wireframe to normal mode here in your scene manager. And if you go to your content tab, uh, this plane, you can find a high, a high, high mesh plane, high polygon mesh. Uh, if you go down to your set tab and under the props folder right here, under 3D blocks, you'll find some quad meshes right here. These are fairly high poly meshes that you want to use when you're, you know, applying a substance with tessellation to your uh, ground plane. So you can find that substance that I use in this uh, tutorial by going to media up here under materials library, under substance, you'll find this concrete pavement. And we've just kind of basically applied that to this ground plane here. We have a very close up camera angle so we can get a bit more intense uh, view right here. Uh, but this concrete pavement has some interesting little uh, um, parameters in the materials uh, tab up here. If you go to materials, you can see we've seen, changed the output size to 1024. So we get a kind of a higher resolution going on here. And we have a tessellation level of 10, which is good. We also have the multiplier level, which we can adjust and you can see we can raise or lower certain parts of the terrain, okay? So multiplier is a very useful little uh, uh, parameter that you can use as part of tessellation on your substance materials. And we have other tutorials that explore more about that. But just so you know, uh, parts of this ground plane are now extruded using the uh, tessellation from the substance material. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it with our set tab here. I'm going to go back to my uh, main folder and to the particle folder. And then into the Popcorn FX Super Tools, we're going to create our own distortion, our own little puddle here, our own little ripples in the puddle. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring my distortion emitter in. Okay, and let's make sure it's at a uh, height that's a little bit higher so we can actually see it above the ground plane there. Make sure the entire uh, dummy is visible because the distortion is going to emit from the bottom pivot point, uh, which is at the bottom of this dummy. Okay, and I'll talk more about that later. But let's, let's take a look at the simulation. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate this by pressing shift s or this button up here and you can see we can move this around it's just a big distortion field okay you can bring it closer to you and the thing about this is currently we have the align mode set to face camera so no matter where i move it it's always going to be a circular distortion facing the camera so we can adjust that by going over to attributes here and down to whoops not our popcorn effects tab rather and we want to go down to basic attributes down here and change the face cam align mode to horizontal. And now it's going to emit in a horizontal fashion. We can move it all around like this. You can see, obviously, we don't want it to emit over the exposed stone here because stones really don't ripple in, in their natural state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it uh, right to about where the stone is, and we're going to move our emitter down using this little doodad right here. We can actually just use the dummy on the screen. Take it further down, further down until we see the stone stop rippling, which means that our dummy has gone down far enough. There we go, so about there maybe. Okay, so now it's only rippling the water and not rippling my dummy. Okay, maybe even a bit further down, let's take it to maybe like 12.5 uh, or something. There we go, okay. So we'll just leave it at that 12.5 on the z-axis there, which is the blue axis sticking up there. Okay. So that's your uh, basic ripple. So we've created a ripple. Hooray for us. Now let's mess around with the popcorn effects uh, parameters and attributes over here. So let's go to our popcorn effects tab. We have the emit rate. We're not going to worry about the quota right now. Let's change our emit rate to something like 3. So you can see we have a constant stream of distortion here. Okay. You know, maybe we want that. Maybe we don't. Let's just leave it at 1 for now. Okay. Because we're going to talk about uh, changing that a bit later. Now, the first thing I want to do as well before I move on is just press shift S to end the simulation. And you can see in the particle section, our distortion uh, diffuse map is just a basic kind of jumble, like chaotic mess right here. What we want to do to create more of a ripple effect is we want to make something more uniform. So I'm going to double click on this channel right here and load up this normal map that I have uh, already saved. And this is going to be create a nice smooth ripple. So let's shift S and simulate this. Now you can see we get that nice smooth ripple. It's fairly fast. Uh, we'd probably want to maybe extend this a little bit, slow it down. So what we can do is change our lifetime minimum and maximum to something like two. Okay. So then our ripples will kind of last on the screen for a bit longer. 
Um, and we maybe change our emit rate down to like, you know, whatever. But that's how you can do that. And you can also increase your global scale as well. So they can go further out like that. Okay. That's one way to do it. Uh, let's just change our global scale to something like two, for example. All right. So we can have those ripples going out further. All right. But you can see, of course, they're ending at the area where our concrete comes above the, or our pebble stone comes around the, uh, comes above the water level rather. Okay. So we got that. We got the little, uh, all that stuff. Let's talk about how to create multiple uh, ripples, okay, or multiple uh, drops of water rain on our on our scene here. So we can do that by changing our emit volume up here under emitter settings. The red x-axis and the green y-axis correspond to these two first sliders right here. So if we change this to a value of 200, it's going to appear at random spots on the x-axis. You can see right there, and maybe 300 on the y-axis. Let's change them both to 300 actually. All right, and so now you can see those drops are appearing at random spots everywhere in our scene. We can change our emit rate to something like three, so we have a, uh, you know, heavier rain. You know, the more the higher we put the emit rate to like five or something, we'll have, uh, you know, further drops of rain. Maybe we can change this to something like 500. It seems to be the size of our scene there. Okay, there you go. So now you can see, you know, random ripples of water. You know, just basically if you want to create the illusion of rain or something. You can combine that with another particle effect to create uh, the look of rain. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention here as well is under lifetime, we have the middle intensity and end intensity uh, sliders right here. Middle intensity, if we take that down, you'll see that our intensity of the, of the droplets gets a lot lower. We can increase that and you'll create much more intense distortions. All right, so that's the main slider you wanna look at in the lifetime section. And you want them to fade out like this. So there you go. And of course, emit rate, you can adjust that as well. Okay, so that's basically it for creating, uh, you know, little ripples uh, of, from raindrops or what have you. Let's just shift S to end that simulation. Now, what I have loaded up here is another scene where I'm going to show you how to create a wave effect. And you can actually find this scene or something really similar to it if you go up to your uh, stage tab here. And under 3D scene, under mesh medium, you'll find this flood map. It's very similar to the one I have on the screen right here and you can use that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we're gonna create a wave by just importing in again that same distortion emitter. Let's just stick her somewhere. It doesn't really matter where we stick it in the scene. Uh, we need to see it, of course. Okay, and this one we're gonna have horizontal as well. Uh, the, the align mode, we wanna have horizontal. I have a little boat in the scene, which we'll, we'll use a little bit later, but let's just move uh, ahead of the boat for now so we can kind of see what we're doing here. And go to our popcorn effects tab, and we'll just leave the distortion map the, the same way it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and simulate. Shift S to simulate. And again, basic attributes, face cam. We're going to change that to horizontal. Okay. Now this one is a little bit different because we're basically emitting on a water plane here. Let's make sure that that's a good level. I think that should be fine. And what we can do here is we want to change our quota and our emit rate. So our emit rate, we're going to make it like pump it up to like something like, uh, you know, 50 or whatever. Okay. So what's going to happen now is it's going to create kind of a steady, cool-looking sci-fi emission like this. And we can bring that up and bring that down above below above the water, okay? Uh, something like this. And let's change our quota to something like uh, maybe 10, okay? So then we can even, you know, uh, 10,000 rather, not 10. <laughs> okay, so then uh, let's change our emit rate to 3,000. And the distortion becomes even more intense. So obviously what we need to do here is change our volume. Uh, okay, so our X and Y, X and Y volumes again. This time we're gonna change them to 4,000. And we can create a line like that. 4,000 on the X axis as well. Cool, so we have these appearing appearance of, you know, random blue lit ripples. So we wanna take away that, the lighting, the blue lighting there, uh, cause it kind of makes it look a little bit fake, like there's fireflies under the water or something like that. So what we're going to do is go down to our lifetime section down here under particle settings, change our tint opacity to 0 0.01, just barely noticeable. Okay. And then it seems, all right. It seems like we have those, you know, steady ripples on the water. We'll bring the level up there a little bit. Okay. So what we can do here is we can actually change our direction. So if we go up to our, uh, uh, emitter settings, let's change it to maybe on the Y axis. So facing down towards the bottom left of our scene at this moment, let's just, uh, give it a value like this. Okay. So what you'll see is you'll see these distortions sort of, you know, moving towards 
that section and we want to change our initial speed here as well. So if we change our initial speed, then you can see we create that. Um, that's probably too fast. That's like a super fast river there. We'll change that to something a little bit lower. But now you can see the ripples moving towards the point on our y-axis there. We can take it the other direction if we want. Reverse the flow of the water, just like that, okay? We can have them go that way as well. And of course, you can change stuff like the global scale, the uh, lifetime minimum maximum as well. A global scale will make it look a lot larger like that. You can also double click a parameter to reset it back to the default as well. You can just double click the global scale back to one. Tint opacity, uh, I'll just leave that at uh, 0 0.01 there. Okay, and uh, again, there's a middle intensity and all that other stuff as well. But that's how you can really, you know, create the appearance of, of ripples going a certain direction. Pump up that global scale a little bit. All right, and yeah, take down that initial speed. It still looks a little too fast for me. Let's make it seem a little bit more idyllic. Okay, so we got that those nice distortions going on like that. Let's go ahead and uh, take that stuff off now. I'm, I'm just going to make our uh, river here, whatever it is, our lake or flooded area, we're going to make it still. So we're just going to delete that emission or emitter there. And I'm going to show you how to create a wake effect behind the boat. So for this, I'm going to go to my content tab. We're going to go back to the particles main folder here, and we're going to use popcorn effects learning samples. You get this with your uh, from the content store, and I'll provide a link in the description where you can uh, get this pack here. And there's some applications for the distortion emitter folder right here, and we're going to use this. Uh, you can find all the other stuff here as well, like the ripple single and everything that I just created. We're going to use this water wake. All right, let's bring that bad boy in there, and use the W hotkey to bring it up. And we're going to bring it somewhere over here. We're going to attach it to the boat momentarily, but I'm going to show you how this one's a little bit different first of all. So just take it right at the surface of the water right there. Okay. Now let's press Shift S to simulate this one. And you can see that we need to probably uh, zoom in a little bit more so we can see it. Maybe even bring it a little bit higher. Okay. So this one you can see is distorting in a much different way. It's distorting kind of like almost in a linear fashion from the center. So we can go over to our popcorn effects tab here. And let's take a look at the particle uh, um, channels that we have here. So there's the distortion one, and you can see this diffuse map is very different. The uh, one that we did for the ripple earlier was circular, and this one's if I launch it into Photoshop, this one's going to be like a, a very linear normal map, and this one also has a tint map as well. I'll show you that in just a moment as we load up Photoshop here. Okay, so here's the uh, distortion map. You can see it's kind of in the shape of a wake. So this is emitting from the center in all directions. And our tint map right here, very similar, just black and white. Okay, so if I press Shift S one more time to simulate, let's simulate that one more time. The unique feature of the wake is that we have the mid-height and mid-width. So if I go over here to, down here to lifetime, you can see there's middle intensity, like I mentioned before, but we also have middle width height and end width and height and you can see that the middle width is 20 and height is 20 and the end is 50. Now if I change the middle to something higher like say middle width at 100 you can see it's emitting from from here to here it's a lot it's stretched a lot further okay and if we change our end width to zero you can see it becomes even more triangular. Okay, we can change our middle width to something like 10, and then our end width to something like uh, 50. Okay, and then as it ends, it's going to stretch out further. So ideally what we want here is because our middle height, uh, because we're emitting, you know, from the source, we want the end, you know, to expand a little bit, just like the wake behind a boat. So we want our width and height to be larger at values of 50, and the middle width and middle height to be, you know, smaller, values of 20. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and attach this to the boat now. And something like that will be fine. We can even bring it closer to the front of the boat. And link it, pick parent, to the boat here. And I already have some animation applied to this boat, so I'm just going to go ahead and play back. And what's going to happen is we'll see in just a moment the emission come behind the boat. And you'll see that the further behind the emission gets, the larger it gets. So here's a 20 up here, and behind that is the value of 50. Okay, so as as the ripple is about to die near the end, 
it gets larger at a value of 50. Okay, let's just play that back one more time so we can get a kind of a better view of it. Just kind of follow it along. Let me play back one more time and let's kind of just follow it live here. So we can get a nice look at the uh, emission. Okay, so you can see it start. All right, and as it gets closer to the end there, it's expanding out. Okay, so that's really all there is to creating the uh, wake effect. You can attach it to anything you want, really. Let's just uh, stop this project for now and load up our final project. Okay, so what we have here is a cool-looking desert scene. And what I'm going to use is in that same folder, that learning samples, under applications, we have, under distortion emitter, a heat uh, example here. I'm going to just bring that, go ahead and bring that into my scene. We can just place it anywhere, really. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up a little bit and bring it closer to the camera. And we can just kind of, uh, you know, uh, let's change to a preview camera here. Press the F hot key to focus on our uh, dummy right here. We can place this anywhere. We want the, obviously, the pyramids and everything to be in the background. So something like this will be fine. Okay. And bring it over here, just in the middle of our scene. And let's go ahead and take a look. So let's just press Shift S to simulate. And you can see we're creating a really heavy distortion. If we move further back, you can see that distortion field gets a little bit smaller because it actually is following an emit volume. Uh, okay, so if we go over here to Popcorn Effects tab and go up to our emit volume, you can see our emit rate is set at 1500. Uh, we can change that to whatever we want. Uh, the quota is currently set to 10,000. We'll just leave that where it is. You can adjust that later. All I really want to show you here is uh, the emit volume. Now, as we get closer to the emitter, obviously we're going to get a stronger effect like this, okay, because we're now in within the field of the emission but let's go ahead and take a look so right now if we expand it on the x-axis so let's just maybe actually take it to uh, zero on the x-axis so what's going to happen now is we have a very uh, thin string of distortion along our green y-axis so you can see right there if we right there above and below the y-axis there's not really much so you can see the top of this pyramid is not really moving not distorting there's just a thin kind of line along the y-axis now we can change that uh, along the z-axis. Let's change the z-axis to something like uh, 4,000. Okay. And when that happens, you'll see that, whoa, suddenly everything kind of stops emitting. Like we don't really have much going on there. And that's because what happens is, let's just change this down to like a more reasonable value, like a 400 instead of 4,000. And once we have that, you'll see some of the emissions start to return. And that's because the higher your emission volume, you need to also make sure that you increase the emit rate. So if you have a larger area to cover, obviously you need more distortions to uh, make that appear, you know, the right way that you want it to. So let's go ahead right here. And you can see we're just emitting along the y-axis and the z-axis right here. If we go maybe to this value right here. We can increase the emit rate to something like uh, 3,000. And we're going to get heavier distortions. They're more concentrated. If we change that to something like 6,000, our maximum value of 10,000, you'll see it'll get really distorted. Okay? And then if we take our uh, Z volume down to like zero, for example, it's going to get really distorted just along that one level right there. So uh, normally you wouldn't, if you wanted to create a more accurate heat wave, you'd want to really spread this out, maybe like 500 on the Z axis. Okay? something like this, and your emit rate would probably be something closer to 5,000 as well. All right, and there you go, and then you can kind of slowly pan along. Maybe even our emit rate is too high, maybe even 2,000, just to get something a bit more subtle. Move along like this, and we're looking through the hot desert at this uh, the pyramids off in the distance. Okay, there you go. So that's how, uh, when you use this heat uh, popcorn effects, you need to make sure that you have your emit volume set along the red axis, the green y axis, or the uh, blue z axis. X, Y, Z, R, G, B, the easiest way to remember it. Okay, so that's really about all I wanted to show you in this tutorial, guys. Uh, thank you again so much for watching. Make sure you check out our other uh, tutorials on popcorn effects and our forums at forum.reillusion.com. And I'll see you in the next video.